Greetings from the dank basement. I am Special Agent Squinty of the Central Insufflation Agency. We're doing a snuff investigation today about a new snuff maker in Michigan, a fellow who calls himself, himself Gadsden Mill. His name is Jeremy. I know nothing about him. He could be an internationally known jewel thief, for all I know. But I don't want to speculate about that because we have two snuffs of his to review. <clears throat> The Gadsden Wild Oak Butterscotch, which he has thoughtfully labeled in large print for me, and even though I can't read it, but my friends on Skype can, uh, and The Black Spot. All right, so I'm going to do both of these on this same video. Uh, after having examined the snuff carefully, showing the color to several friends on, on uh, Skype and so on, I can give you a fairly good description. Uh, my overall first impression you'll get as I do each snuff. Okay, let's open up the wild oak butterscotch and see what we have. All right, now in the tin I am told this is a rather mottled and unappetizing green and gray color. Uh, browns, tones of browns. It sort of looks like uh, maybe some cigarette ash got dropped into it. I know it didn't. But there's a, a displeasing color gray in this, I understand, along with the greenish-brown color. In the tin, I'm smelling a lot of green tobacco. I'm smelling tobacco that has not been aged terribly long, uh, has not been fermented, has not been steam pasteurized. I am not smelling one whiff of butterscotch. I, no, I can't say that. There's a little bit right at the edge of the butterscotch. All right, let's uh, give it a pinch, run it through our fingers, run barefoot through our snuff, which I normally don't do with artisans, uh, but I'm going to. The grind is, is actually pretty good. It's a medium to coarse. There is some unevenness here, which I would expect from artisan snuffs. But more disturbing to me, and I just found this, there are big pieces. This isn't a prilla of snuff. I, oh, maybe it is. But I also found a, like a four millimeter piece of stem that was sharp at both ends when I first opened this tin. If that had gone up my nose, it would have hurt. We were talking nosebleed maybe. Um, not nice. If you're going to use stem, Jeremy, uh, please make sure it's finely ground. I understand stretching the tobacco, you can't just use lamina. It gets expensive, but uh, don't don't let big sharp pieces of stem into your snuff tins. It's going to end up hurting somebody and uh, that's bad. Uh, the grind on the squinty scale of one to five, the grind gets a two. It ain't bad, it could be better. Moisture content, medium. Uh, when I first opened the tin I must have picked a little off the top because it wasn't pilling up quite as nice as it is now. So there is some good moisture here. Uh, it Overall, I would, I would not call this a moist snuff by any means, maybe a moderate moisture snuff. All right, I'm dreading this, but let's take a pinch. I don't like the way this smells in the tin at all. Uh, there's a lot of fanboys and fangirls on Snuff House. They're praising this stuff up and down. I'm gonna, I didn't read anything uh, before sitting down to do this review. I just took a quick look at the rhetoric surrounding Black Spot because the name says absolutely nothing about the scent. So I thought I'd cheat a little bit, but it's nothing. He's got this marvelous prose, you know, the legend of the black spot and kegs of gunpowder and pirates and rah, 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 rah. it doesn't say a f darn thing uh, about what I should be expecting from the snuff. So maybe that's okay. We'll get to that in a minute. This is supposed to smell like butterscotch candy. Grandma making homemade butterscotch to send us into the fields to pick corn barefoot and nearly naked in the Michigan wilds. Whatever. Yeah, I, I love I love memories like that. My grandma never made butterscotch, but she did try to make scotch once. It was a disaster. Uh, I'm, I'm warming this pinch. Uh, boy, I don't have high expectations of this, judged from the tin note, but let's, let's see what we got. Oh, yeah. <coughs> it's a little drier than I thought. It was going to be up in my nose. Uh, I am getting a little raw butterscotch flavor here, which I didn't the first time I sniffed this. Um, a little tiny bit 
It's not an overwhelming butterscotch by any means, and I would like to see more of it here. I'm smelling a lot of what smells to me like green tobacco in this. Um, I'm going to do this real quick, even though I haven't gotten the nicotine yet. There's Nick here. Uh, on, the, on the scale of 1 to 10, so far, it's like a 4 out of 10, but uh, it might kick in. Yeah, in fact, it is. I'm going to probably upgrade the nicotine at the end of this review. Um, boy, I tell you what, I don't like this. I'm sorry, Jeremy. It's okay. And there's nothing really wrong, but this needs work. This, to me, needs a stronger butterscotch. You need to age the tobacco in this. It smells very green. you got to fix the grind and sieve it better so I don't have these dangerously sharp little thorns of stem that, had it gone into my nose, Jeremy, it would have given me, at the very least, a nosebleed. Can't do that. Um, on the squinty scale, where one is this good thing and is reserved for products such as chili chocolate from Wilson's, Wilson's Vanilla, uh, and a couple of others uh, that I absolutely hated, and five is absolutely the best you can get, uh, this is a two. Um, I hope that he can tighten up his act and do better with other snuffs. I'm going to blow my nose here, guys, and, but I, I do want to say something positive about Jeremy and about Gadsden Snuff. Making snuff is not easy. You can't just stick pipe tobacco in a coffee grinder, whip it around until it's relatively fine, then throw in some off-the-shelf flavoring. That's not how snuff is made. That is not what Jeremy is doing. Although, judging from this sample, it kind of smells like that. But it, uh, it, it's, making snuff is not an easy endeavor. It requires a lot of tweaking, a lot of work, a lot of tasting, a lot of work, a lot of love, a lot of work. And I give much respect to Jeremy for even trying. But if you're going to sell the stuff, even if you call it taking donations, yes, you're selling it. If you're going to sell the stuff in particular, you really got to improve the quality and the consistency. And I think there's going to be a problem with that. Uh, artisans typically have this problem when they first get going. I know that Chef Daniel, Old Mill, his first snuffs were not terribly consistent. He got better with time. That's what I'm looking for from Jeremy. <clears throat> I can't find my damn handkerchief, Alex. Alex is with me here on Skype. Snuff anybody, McFeagle. He's a good boy. Hanging out in Denmark. There he is. I got my headphones on. I realized I didn't mute the speakers, and you're coming through my speakers. So you can even say hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, there's our pal Alex, snuff anybody, McFeagle, from beautiful Denmark up there in Scandahuvia. All right. I can't find my handkerchief, and this is really unprofessional of me. Uh, you know what? I tell you what, I will split this into two videos. Uh, on the squinty scale, where one is disgusting, five is delicious, this is a two at best. I expect it will improve. Needs more butterscotch, more consistency in the grind, and please remove the shrapnel. From the dank basement, Agent Squinty from the Central Insufflation Agency. Kicking ass and taking names. Thanks for watching. That was kind of a douchey review, wasn't it?